All right, so I just want to do a quick first impression on the new boxing boots that I got. Um, so last year uh, in February, I bought a pair of the Tidal Speedflex Encore, and I was really impressed with them at first because uh, they fit pretty much perfectly, and uh, they allowed me to pivot on the, the vinyl uh, the vinyl canvas that we have on our mats. Um, they were suitable for using in uh, Savat, even though I didn't actually use them for that, I used them in street shoes. Uh, the problem was, one of the big problems was, um, that the synthetic upper was not shielded at all around the edges, and so with normal walking uh, up and down the streets, I'm putting, you know, somewhere in a mile plus a day uh, walking in them. I spend most of my day barefoot, so I'm not doing a lot of hard use, but I'm still using them for kind of an unintended purpose. And uh, over time, I started noticing some wear in the heels and on the edges, and uh, the soles started separating. And uh, now gluing the sole back on was simple, and that was fine. But uh, on the heel, where the natural rocking motion of, of walking happens, um, I actually wore a hole clean through all the way to the inside of the shoe. And on top of that, uh, the, the mesh upper. Uh, so the, the upper was PVC and mesh. And the PVC part was doing okay, but the, uh, the mesh was starting to separate from the seams and whatnot. Now, to be fair, I have wide feet and having wide feet on shoes that don't actually come in a wide width means that I'm gonna be putting stress on the seams. And so it's not just that I was using them for street wear and not for, uh, for mat wear, uh, but it's also the fact that they're not really built for my feet. In fact, one of the major problems that we have with boxing and wrestling shoes is the fact that they pretty much don't come in wide. And that's kind of a crime. <laughs> um, the, not everybody has narrow feet. Not everybody has even medium feet. Some of us have wide feet. And uh, I think it's pretty important to be able to accommodate for that. And companies like ASICS and Everlast and Tidal certainly have the resources to offer those options, and I'm not sure why they're not offering them. So the, the, the Speedflex Encore, would I recommend as a mat shoe? Yeah, I would. It didn't quite make it a year as a street shoe for me, but I would recommend it as a mat shoe. They're only 45 bucks, I mean, plus whatever the shipping is, right? But they're only 45 bucks right now. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you can get six months out of a shoe like that, that's, that's a pretty good run. Um, and the, the fact that they are suitable for uh, shoe wearing kickboxing, uh, even if you're wearing kick pads, uh, those, they're, they're, they're good for that. They, they absolutely are good for that and the soles give you enough traction but also enough room to pivot. They're, they're very, very, very good for mat shoes. I just would not use them as, as street shoes again. So that brings us to first impressions on these. Um, you'll forgive me, I'll try to write it on the screen because I do not remember offhand what the model no, uh, of this one is, but this is actually Title's newest uh, shoe. And looks, it looks nice. Uh, I really like the sole on it. It's a slight upgrade of the uh, the sole on the Speedflex, which was just stippled, and this is more like uh, like fish scales, and I, and I kind of like that. But for me, the important thing here is that the sole rubber actually wraps around uh, over and above the edges of the sole, which is going to make this a better street shoe. And again, I am wearing these for street shoes. I am not wearing these for mat shoes. I still have good good condition wrestling shoes. I don't need mat shoes right now. And because I like minimalist shoes, I like a shoe with almost no sole, uh, a lot of flexibility, lightweight, uh, and I prefer a high top, then that means the kind of wrestling shoes and boxing shoes are it for me because the other companies don't really make minimalist shoes that uh, suit what I want. And so when I got these today, I noticed immediately the construction is better. They actually have some grommets on them, which would mean, or with these grommets on there, that means that they're a little less safe for doing kickboxing sparring. If you were going to be doing savat in these, you would have to wear kick pads um, because the, those grommets, if they come loose, they could start, you know, causing scrapes and scratches and injuries. Uh, so that would be a problem. 
the sole is a bit heavier duty. It's not quite as flexible. Uh, so again, maybe not as good for Savat because it would provide kind of an unfair advantage. And you know, I mean, it, in regular sparring, you shouldn't be going that hard anyway, so not that big of a deal, but still safety-minded and all that. Now, I will say this, when I put these on my feet today, they didn't fit quite as well as the Speedflex did. These are a little more confining. They're a little bit more narrow, and I don't like that. Um, the, the toe box, you know, because this is still um, a fairly, you know, flexible synthetic upper and all that, they will kind of accommodate to my foot over time. But the thing is that you shouldn't have to stretch a shoe, right? A shoe should be made well for you. And here's the other thing. My left foot is a little bit longer than my right foot, but like a half an inch, not even that maybe. And thus I always have to order a size up to accommodate uh, my left foot because it's in kind of one of those weird nebulous uh, in-betweens. And when you order a size up, you get a slightly wider width as well. So normally that's not that big of an issue. But when it comes to boxing shoes and wrestling shoes, even a size up is still pretty tight on my foot. So title, I know you're not listening to this because I'm a small fry. Start making wide width shoes. There's, there's no excuse not to make wide width, right? And most of us don't want to have an extra two inches of shoe material just to accommodate the width by ordering sizes up. That's, that's not a good idea. So, uh, yeah, first impressions, pretty good. They look nice. They, 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 uh, the, the construction is good. Um, they feel nice except for the constricting toe box which will probably stretch out with, with time. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's my big complaint. Narrow shoe, toes aren't shaped like this. Feet are not shaped like this. Right? Take, take a cue from, from the minimalist movements. You know, look at, um, you know, uh, Merrill and Vivo Barefoot and Zero Shoes. And I don't know, look at a foot sometime. Like look at a healthy foot sometime. You'll find that feet aren't shaped like this. So maybe we need to start looking at designing shoes a little differently. Let me show you something. So my feet, you can tell my left foot is just ever so slightly longer than my right. So I always have to order a, a size up uh, just to accommodate the length of my left foot. My right foot is actually a little bit wider than my left. And both of my feet are wide, so I need wide width. So we need a lot more of these, uh, you know, athletic shoe companies, boxing and wrestling shoes and, and, and so on. So to start making wide width shoes, not all of us have baby feet. Now, let me show you something else. The foot is not the shape of the toe box on the shoe. Why does everybody think that our toes are pointed Right? Unless you have extremely unhealthy feet and, you know, and your toes are all jammed in like you were, you know, a, a subject of foot binding, your, your foot is a lot wider at the tip, not narrower. The foot and the shoe need to be in a similar shape, not such a, a, a disparate shape. And this is a very, very common problem, especially with wrestling and boxing shoes. Huge problem. And the other problem there is, of course, that, you know, uh, the, the shoes that are ergonomic, the shoes that are built for human feet, are not suitable for boxing and wrestling. They're not suitable for savat. They're not suitable for sports. All they're suitable for is running and hiking. And they're typically really ugly. Boxing shoes and wrestling shoes look nice, but a lot of the minimalist shoes look crappy. So we need to start making some changes. And uh, I don't know how to go about that other than starting your own company, which I'm currently not in the position to bankroll, but uh, yeah, that's something. But uh, yeah. Maybe I'll let you guys know how these do, you know, in, in a few months and, you know, upwards from a year from now. But I do have, I do have better hopes for these than I did uh, for the last ones. Again, the last one's a Speedflex Encore. 
I, I would definitely still recommend as a cheap mat shoe. I, I think it's a it's a it's a good mat shoe. Um, these would probably be fine if you're just doing hands uh, or if you're wearing kick pads. But other than that, um, you know, they'd probably be okay for wrestling. But if you're mixing it up, you know, and you're kicking, uh, you might start finding uh, you might start finding these to be just a little bit on the stiff and. and, and maybe slightly too dangerous side for, for regular sparring if you're involving your feet. But other than that, it's fairly impressed. Just, they're not perfect. And I'm not expecting perfection, but maybe let's start pushing in that direction. I don't know guys, what do you think? Should we start a martial arts clothing company for people-shaped people? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you because uh, I tell you uh, the, the shoes, the gloves, the gi pants, things like that, they never fit right. None of them ever fit right. People are weird organic creatures and you need a lot more options. I know options are expensive, but I don't know. Maybe we need to do something to fix that. I don't know. I will talk to you guys later. Good journey. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, give the dog a bone. You can follow us on our other social media accounts. And if you really like us, you can head over to Amazon and buy a shirt. You can also go over to Gumroad and purchase some of our instructional courses. All of the links will be provided and also on our website. If you happen to be in the Phoenix area, we would love to meet you. Come drop in for a class, you know, even just to chat. And if you're looking for a new home, we would be happy to have you. So until next time, good journey.